Justin Meyer is back here with another video for y'all. So in today's video, I just wanted to share with y'all my main guitar rack and what I really use about 90 to 95 percent of the time um, on different gigs that I'm on and whatnot. And uh, just wanted to take you through and just share with y'all what all guitars that I use. Um, I have several instruments, um, even besides just this guitar rack. So it really depends on the gig, and it's really hard to just narrow it down to really six guitars. But these are all the slots that I have available on my guitar rack here that I really find myself going to about 90 to 95 percent of the time, like I was saying. So we'll just go ahead and start off with the first guitar. Um, this is what I was playing in that first intro lick there. Um, this is just a 1970 uh, Fender Telecaster. Really great guitar. Um, I really only find myself using the bridge pickup. I don't really like the way the neck pickup sounds, and that's typical Telecaster um, with vintage Tellys. Um, it's really all about the bridge pickup. And I really just leave it on the bridge pickup the whole time, the whole time that I'm playing this guitar. I love the way that this thing sounds. And I hope you all enjoyed that first little intro segment there. Um, let me know what you guys think of that tone. Drop a comment down below. I love hearing from y'all. And uh, I just, I love this guitar. I think it really is incredible. Um, I use it all the time um, for country music, for stuff that I get hired on for. And uh it's just really got this bite and this snap that I really look for in these Telecaster pickups, especially when I'm doing that kind of chicken picking thing. It's kind of my own little approach and how I actually go about doing it. Um, I know a lot of guys will hold the pick and then they kind of do like a hybrid thing where they roll with the rest of their fingers. Well, what I do is I take the pick and I actually hide it with my pointer finger and then I just use the uh, my thumb and the rest of my fingers and just do it that way. I'm I'm self-taught when it comes to that kind of thing, so that's just what feels most comfortable for me. So um, I think it, it works well. A lot of people seem to dig it. So anyways, on to the next guitar here. So 70 Fender Telecaster. It's all original, by the way, too, with the original pots and the original pickups and stuff, so nothing's been changed there. And then here is my early 70s 335. This is a 71, technically, but there's a couple things, you know, these early 70s Gibsons are really hard to date because the pots on this date to 71, and I also have a Les Paul Custom that I'll share with y'all too that I got from Bukovac. And, um, you know, it's just interesting because even on this guitar here too, you'll see the dot on the eye there. And also I have the original pickup covers here as well that don't have the Gibson logo embossed, you know, the, uh, the pickup covers don't have the Gibson logo. So these early 70s Gibsons are pretty hard to date because the serial numbers are, are pretty much pointless. They don't do anything. And, um, you know, you can really look at the pots and they'll, they'll share a date on there. Like this is dated to 71. My Les Paul Custom is dated to 71. But, you know, these early 70s Gibsons are just kind of inconsistent and a little bit all over the place. But it's got the original T-top pickups here. And um, I do have the pickup covers and I could put them back on. But honestly... I like the way that they sound without the covers and um, I'm liking the way it looks. I think it's unique. I think it's cool. So this is just a 335, 71, 335. And um, it's a really wonderful instrument. There's really nothing that you can't do with a 335. So I found myself grabbing this guitar a lot. So really excellent instrument there. And then on to my uh, 60 Les Paul Special. It's a TV Yellow. Absolutely love this guitar. I just put on the Music City bridge on this guitar. And um, I just can't say enough good things about these Music City bridges. They're just amazing. They intonate super well. And um, it just 
fixes all of the issues that the original bridge will give you with these old, uh, whether it's a Les Paul Jr. or a special, I also put it on a 56 Jr. as well, um, this Music City bridge, and it just it just works amazing. So I, I love this guitar. As I say, it's a 60 Les Paul special, TV yellow, which is super cool, very rare, and um, yeah, they're just, this is just a wonderful instrument. Um, it's been refretted, but everything else is completely original, and this guitar, it just sounds amazing. I absolutely love it, and um, I find myself using this all the time. Really nice weight, not too heavy, um, very light, and um, I actually brought it over to Tom's place. This was a little while ago, and I wish I would have recorded it, but um, he he picked this thing up, and he just, he just went on a journey. I mean, he just really was so inspired with this guitar, and uh, he wants to buy it from me, but uh, it's currently not for sale, so... Love this guitar, as I say, 60 Les Paul Special TV Yellow. Really cool guitar there. On to the next guitar. This is a 64 SG Standard. It's all original, um, except it has uh, changed tuners there, and there has been a heel repair on this guitar. But I love the way that this guitar sounds, and this neck just feels great to play. And these SGs, you know, I grew up playing more like Les Paul style guitars. But um, I've really found myself using SGs a lot more later on in my guitar playing journey. You know, I just find myself using this all the time. There's this extra mid-range punch that you get with these SGs, and they're just lighter weight, and they just make for a great gigging guitar. They make for a great recording guitar as well. Just that additional mid-range punch that these have, it's just really awesome. And um, this is just a wonderful guitar, in my opinion. 64 was the best year for the SG, in my opinion, as a lot of other people share that opinion as well. But um, this is just a really wonderful instrument. You know, it's been refretted as well, but the frets feel great. They're not sharp at all, and they, they just, they're meaty. They feel really, really good there. And um, this is just a wonderful instrument. So 64 SG standard. On to the next guitar here. Here is a 71 Les Paul Custom. This is what I was mentioning earlier about how it can be a little bit difficult to date these early 70s Les Pauls and uh, just Gibsons in general. Um, this does have a change bridge on here. It has this Nashville style bridge, but this guitar is just amazing. I don't wanna change anything with it. It stays in tune really well, and these T-top pickups are some of the fattest pickups I've ever heard. They just sound amazing. And um, the pots on here date to 71 the original uh, witch hat knobs there, and original tuners. And then you'll also see there the dot on the eye there, and also the pickup covers don't have the Gibson logo on there. So the pots date on this particular guitar to very late 71. So I wanna say that this guitar was probably made, it's either 71 or into 72, but before the Gibson logo covers. That's just my opinion on this guitar, but I got this from Tom as well. And um, this is just an amazing guitar, honestly. It just sounds amazing. And as I say, some of the fattest pickups I've heard. And it just plays great. It's a really nice weight too. A lot of these 70s Gibsons can be all over the place and the necks can be uh, not great and they can be real heavy instruments, but this is a really nice weight. It's not heavy at all. So it's very surprising. And um, this is just a really awesome guitar. So lucky to have that one. And on to the last guitar here. This is my 64 Firebird 5. This is one of my favorite instruments that I own, hands down. I love the way that this thing sounds. It's just amazing. It's completely 100% original. And um, I just absolutely love the way that this thing sounds. I was really new to the whole Firebird thing and um, I had brought this over to Tom's and he got this thing set up. and all ready to go. This guitar was actually under a bed since 1970. That's how long that this guitar has been owned by the previous owner and I got it from the previous owner that had just sold it just recently. Um, this was you know, a couple months ago now at this point, but I did a really cool video with Tom on that. So if you haven't seen that already, be, sh be sure to check that out for sure. But um, yeah, you know, this guitar was owned from the previous owner since 1970. They had bought it from their cousin and he had bought this guitar brand new and played it from 64 to 70. And it's literally been under a bed since 70. So up until I owned it and uh, until I, I acquired it. And um, yeah, we just got this thing all set up and 
you know, the frets needed some oil, you know, contact cleaner on the pickup switches and uh, on the pots and stuff. But this guitar really came out great. It's just amazing. And it's crazy. It has the original case and it has original Gibson strings from back in the day. And it, I mean, it's like a time capsule. It's like you're going back to the 60s or to the 70s. You know, it's just wild um, when you open up that case. You know, it's all original and uh, it's just really, this was a hell of a find. So very fortunate to have this guitar. Love this thing a lot. Um, basically, our video on the Firebird was, um, we did a shootout because Tom likes the 250K valued pots. This has stock the 500K, which is much brighter in comparison to his. Um, but honestly, I like having the extra brightness with the 500K value pots because, you know, you can just take the tone knob and just back it down just a little bit if you wanted to darken it up a little bit or you could just leave it on 10 and just leave the brightness on there. So, you know, I'm totally cool with that. And this is just, again, one of my favorite instruments that I own. I'm very, very lucky to own this guitar. I'm very fortunate to have this thing. So with that, that is my main guitar rack. And these are all the instruments that I really find myself grabbing for and really use all the time for my profession as a professional musician. And with that, I just wanted to thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it as always. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like the video and drop a comment down below with what you guys think. I absolutely love hearing from y'all. And also, if y'all would like to show your support for the channel, I have several links linked down below in the description box. I have a Venmo tip jar, a PayPal tip jar, and a Patreon page and a YouTube membership as well. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Y'all take care. Love y'all.